Welcome inside Eeks Athletics Complex. We have Big South Soccer tonight on ESPN+. Plus. The Gardner Webb Running Bulldogs trot into town searching for a top four spot in the conference standings. They take on the host and top record in the Big South, the Campbell Fighting Camels. They won last year's title, looking to build on that with a 2-0 start in league play. We welcome inside the booth with Zach Burley, Evan Budrovich getting ready for first kick. Campbell's offense, 11th best in the country in scoring. How does Gardner-Webb slow them down defensively tonight? The big thing tonight for them is to keep this low scoring. If they can get to that first 45 without conceding, that really sets up that last 45, maybe to nick a goal and try and get that three points late. Gardner-Webb defensively led by senior captain Lourdes Lillamoose. How does he organize the defense tonight? Yeah, coach said he really trusts him to organize, to execute the game plan out there, and he's going to have to do a good job of keeping that back four tight together, shifting from side to side because that's where Campbell can hurt you. Bring it from one end to the other, find open space and score. That offense scored three goals on Saturday, led by freshman striker Kenny Amish, a goal and assist. How is he building on that momentum here tonight? He's so good at the shooting side of things. We know what he can do, but really his passing is what sets him apart. If he can get in those wide areas, cut inside, and look for that incision pass, he may get that secondary tertiary assist that sets up the game winner in this one. This could be a playoff preview of the Big South Tournament. We'll have starting lineups right after this on ESPN+. Plus. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Big things are happening this year across the South, from the mountains to the coast. The fast are getting faster. The strong are getting stronger. And the best is getting better. Get ready to raise your expectations. Get ready for something big. Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Big South Sports. There's not a secret to what actually happens behind the scenes at a bank. Here at First Citizens, we're trying to educate the client in each step of what's actually going to happen and actually have them make the educated decision around what steps and what options they utilize. We want to become that trusted advisor that actually guides them down that road, helping you reach your goals. That's Forever First. It's 8 a.m. Fried chicken, better with Pepsi. <sighs> In class or on game day, we compete towards degrees, championships, excellence on every level. More than 4,000 student athletes. We are the Big South, where winners are made. In class or on game day, we compete towards degrees, championships, excellence on every level. More than 4,000 student athletes. We are the Big South, where winners are made. Gardner Webb enters this match at one and one in conference play, searching for a second road win. And we'll take a look at the starting lineup for Tony Setzer, his keeper, Malel Rios, the most saves in the conference. A group without two starters tonight, Omar Bodaka and Victor Kurnestead. How do they find that rhythm? on their side of the pitch. Yeah, big thing for them is just to control the pace of the game. If you let Campbell dictate to you for too long, they're just going to wear you down. You chase too long, you're going to give up the ball, you're going to be back along your own back four. It's only going to be a matter of time before you give one up. Dustin Fonder's club features the freshman of the week in the conference and the best scoring unit. Quick change, though, Gerard Broussard moving into the starting lineup with a late scratch for Adrian Morales. How does that shape things up for the Camels? That's going to change up the entire shape for them, really, because number 18, Broussard, is going to start up top, whereas number 13, Tyler Young, was going going to start up top, so it's a different positional switching, even though they're going to be in the same shape. Campbell has won 14 of the 20 all-time meetings. It's been very one-sided during the last four years. 
as we get set to go. Gerard Broussard on the ball. And our lead referee gives us clearance to get things started. Lines up the Rolex, and away we go here from Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Campbell's attack, 11th in the country in scoring. All they did, three quick goals on Presbyterian, two in the opening 10 minutes to dominate one of the most stingy defensive clubs in the conference. A huge point of pride for Dustin Fonder this week with his team's performance. Yeah, he knew that was going to be one of the more difficult games, not only because it was Presbyterian, but because it was Presbyterian on the road. We know how hard they've been to break down over the years in conference play, and they were thankful to get a couple of goals early because that meant that that positional play of trying to keep the other team out was really gone away. It forces them to come out and try and press you. This Gardner-Webb squad, 1-1 one one in the league, a 3-0 loss at high point one of the league favorites this past weekend, and a win over Upstate, a surprising squad from the spring. Frank Momo sends it forward, and a quick foul right here at midfield. Gardner-Webb leads the league in fouls. It's part of their defensive strategy, something Tony Setzer has challenged his club to not make the critical mistake. Yeah, I mean, fouls in these areas are not that big of a deal because, like just Campbell just did, they took it backwards. Also, Campbell's not a team that's going to try and send up everybody for every set piece. It's going to have to be in and around the 18 for them to do that. Otherwise, it's just basically going to be a free pass backwards. With the change up top, Broussard gets the start out of Midlothian, Virginia. There's a long ball forward, promising, and an offside flag is drawn. Rios, the keeper, will be busy in this matchup. He's had five games with 10 or more saves, a very active goalkeeper for Gardner-Webb. Yeah, and I think that we have to keep in mind, if you look at Gardner-Webb's record, 2-8 and eight, doesn't look great, but look at the results in those. I mean, a one nothing loss, 2-1 loss, one nothing 2-1. They're not losing games by a lot outside of the high point UAB and Mercer match. He's been a large part of that, but as a defense, you can't feel too bad. If you're losing games by one goal, that means you were in it to the end. Tony Setzer, when evaluating his club, said the record is not great, but the performances have been much better than that 2-8 and eight mark. Here's a long ball forward. Ryan Madondo, one of the top strikers for Gardner-Webb, he draws a cor corner kick. And this is Gardner-Webb's strength, second in the conference, over five corner kicks a contest. We asked Setzer coming in, who can be clinical and finish in the box? That's been a rotating question for this club. Yeah, and the good thing is they have a lot of height in there. The problem is they have to face a Campbell team with a lot of height as well. They're very good off set pieces, but the thing with these is the more, the better. Get a good service. You never know what might happen. The service here from Samuel Catherall, the captain, the senior from Renton, Washington. The left-footed winger triggers it in to the front post and an easy clearance. Moses Men's a part of a back line that surrenders less than a goal and a half per contest. They pitched a shutout in their last conference performance. Yeah, and you talk about all of that, how it's a pretty good sounding defensive record, but you put into context, that's one of the worst Campbell's had recently. So that just goes to show you that their last match was their first clean sheet. They feel really good about the fact that even though they haven't kept the clean sheets when they wanted to, they're still able to get really good results. There's Sebastian Reventlow with some high ball pressure, challenging Basafi Doti in this back line for Campbell. A club that has a plus 14 goal differential on the year. You mentioned the lack of shutouts. They've been able to score two and a half goals per contest and fifth overall in total goals. Yeah, that kind of goes back to what we were talking about in the pregame. It's just if Campbell can get two goals, it's going to be hard to beat them. I mean, look at what they've done so far. UNCW, really good team. They put three up on them. That means that you have to score four to win, and there aren't many teams in the country who can do that. Decent ball movement here from Jake Morris trying to create space. Momo coming up towards the box. That's a good dispossession from Gardner-Webb and keeping it in play, Pon Nije. It's Gardner-Webb squad, 11 different countries represented. Very diverse roster for Tony Setzer in year 35 with the program. He was a founding father of this club from the NAIA ranks up to Division II. And now a club that has a winning record in the Big South three of the last four years. They sit at one and one in the tables tonight. Campbell's had their fair share of success. 14-3 and two in conference play over the last three full seasons. They're the top dog in the league and earned plenty of respect from Setzer coming in as he was preparing for this matchup. Yeah, these two teams know what to expect of one another because Coach Fonder for Campbell has been in the league for such a long time. And then of course Setzer is pretty much synonymous with big South soccer at this point. 
Morris sends it in. No one on target there as Amish comes forward. Dispossessed by Nijay. The back left winger challenged early. Open space for Momo. Sends it into the box. And Catherall helps knock it down. That's a big moment defensively from Gardner-Webb because that was a really good chance. Boy, Jamie Lamb takes it right through the wickets of Gardner-Webb. Bodies forward for the Camels in these opening five minutes. Amish trying to center. Off the goalkeeper and through! The opening strike for Campbell in six minutes as Gerard Broussard comes in to score. And just think about it, only a few minutes. Gerard thought he was going to be starting this game on the bench. He took his opportunity, said, hey, you're going to put me in the starting lineup. I'm not going to let that go by me. Slots at home really well. The late addition to the lineup, Broussard on the deflection, and Malel Rios could not squeeze it. Well, that's something we actually talked with Coach Setzer about was a couple of goals he's given up on rebounds. Credit to Campbell for finishing it, but as a goalkeeper, you got to make sure that if you do give up a rebound, that it goes away from the goal. Broussard's first career start two years ago was against Gardner-Webb. He gets the start late tonight and able to convert for a 1-0 lead. We mentioned this offense at two and a half goals per game. This is the exact formula that Dustin Fonder wants to see six minutes in. And this is exactly what Campbell wanted to see and the opposite of what Gardner-Webb wanted to see. We said that if they can keep it scoreless for a long time, that's better. It's okay if you give up a goal. It doesn't mean things are over. It just means you got to keep it low scoring. You can keep it one goal game for as long as possible. The longer you hold into it, you never know what might happen off a set piece or a long ball. That's a promising ball forward by George Badico, searching for Kenny Amish, the freshman of the week in the conference. Amish on the captain, Catherall, zigs in and is dispossessed by Nije. And you saw what Catherall did there on the edge of the 18. He just gave a little bit of a shoulder, and that's what you have to do as a defender, is get as close to fouling someone without fouling them, because otherwise he's just going to dribble around you. These teams have an equal number of fouls on the year, 122. I found that fascinating coming in. Campbell, a very physical team with a reputation of winning games in this conference. Gardner-Webb trying to find its footing. Fifth game in 14 days for the running Bulldogs. They do have the off round this weekend. No games on Saturday. So Coach Tony Setts are using this matchup for both growth and attrition. Here's a promising long ball forward, but an offside flag searching for Madondo. He's been the top striker that's been healthy in this lineup this year for Gardner-Webb. That's the run you want to see from him as well. That ball over the top was really good. It just needed to be a second earlier, but you could see where that landed. If you can put a couple of those in here in the first half, very well might see one of them go your way. Broussard plays forward, nearly had possession. Gardner-Webb's with captains on the defense, and now a turnover to Morris. He looks to convert and trickles it wide. Goal kick earned as Morris nearly made it 2-0. He has improved so much over this two years that he's been here, or two seasons, I should say. But what we've seen him do is wind things in slowly, kind of bringing all of it together, putting the pieces together. And he did a really good job to win the ball high up the pitch. Never easy to so quickly go from retrieving the ball to shooting it. But in the end, you want to see him try and put that on frame. Morris is third on the team in shots. He has 25. It's an easy dispossession for this Campbell defense. 2-0 in the conference play so far. Dustin Fonder mentioned this is a week his team must earn six points to stay at the top of the ranks in the conference. You never want to bookend guarantee victories, but he did say if his team did not perform well this week, that would be indicative of why they would not win the title. Yeah, I mean, the big part about it is, you know, there are a couple of really good teams in this league, and you know that's going to be high point, who Campbell have on the road. It's not an easy place to win, Vert Stadium, with the turf so they know that if they're going to play against other teams at home that they're favored to beat you got to get results otherwise you're going to force yourself to get a win when you don't want to have to on an opposition ground that stays in a Campbell throw in Gardner Webb searching for some victories in this park they have not won since 2016 earned a draw four years ago otherwise there's been all Campbell in the recent series here's a long ball in play and onside for Tyler Young lays it underneath and cleared out for the moment Doty Assesses, goes to the backside, and head of the way for a corner. Searching for Jake Morris, and now a corner kick upcoming. Two things you want to look at here. Broussard getting the goal early. He coming into this team changes the way it is. It would have been young up top, but because he is now more of a free roll to roam, he's not that big central striker. You saw him get on the end of a ball here and service that in. If it wasn't for him in those areas, that attack would have looked very different. Here's Tyler Young who has not only dominated this conference, leading it in points, 
now rising the national ranks in scoring seven goals and five assists. Let's see what the redshirt sophomore has dialed up on this corner. Goes short to the front and nicked wide. Diego Koenix knocks it out. Koenix has been really good off those set pieces, especially here on this ground. He's already scored a couple of headers, and when you can rely upon a defender not only to do his job on one side of the field, but also to offer a threat, it just brings a whole other dimension to this Campbell attack. Gardner-Webb subs in Odal Brown, the Iowa Lakes Community College transfer. He has started for the last five matches on that back line for the running Bulldogs. A 3-0 loss at High Point this past Saturday. Otherwise, that defense had been forming into one of the top five in the conference. They do fall behind in the sixth minute on a goal by Gerard Broussard. Well, and you see it, Brown comes in for Nije on the left-hand side, so that's where the goal came from. That's where we've seen the chances come from as well with Momo. So maybe they've seen something and say, hey, if we get some different personnel on, maybe that switches up where Campbell pushes their attack through. Brown gets through the Campbell defense line and easily cleared out by Vasafi. Amish trickling his way in. Squeezes through three defenders. Amish plays it forward to Young, back to Badico, and he couldn't find him. This Campbell attack, so versatile. Moving the ball around the pitch. Out wide to Morris. Gardner-Webb sinking bodies in, trying to limit a 1-0 deficit. What a back touch to Badico, who plays it to Morris and misses his target. Boy, the combination plays have been pretty but almost perfect from Campbell in these first 10 minutes. Yeah, those were two really good interchanges. One of the big things, though, we talked about it in pregame, how Amish, even if he doesn't get the shot that leads to the goal or the assist, in that instance, he dribbled past three players, laid in a ball, layoff, went off to a player who could have got a shot. So in that case, he wouldn't have been on the score sheet for a goal or an assist, but he still very much created that goal. He's the heartbeat of that Campbell front three. Brown with a great dispossession of Amish, who had a goal and assist against Presbyterian. Entered into the starting attack. And now a sloppy pass having to held back by Carlos Jimenez O'Farrell. More of a defensive midfielder for this Gardner Webb running Bulldog squad that enters at 2 and 8 on the year. And the thing you have to remember from Gardner Webb's perspective is so far they've played upstate. High Point, Campbell. Those were the top three teams last season. So even if you come away with just the one win, you can still feel pretty good about yourself. If you can come away with a win and a draw, which is still very much on the cards tonight, you feel ecstatic about what you've got. Asheville still to come. I mean, there's some games in there you can pick up points. So tonight's not do or die. You just want to get a good performance. Amish looking for a foul, and he's granted his wish with Sebastian Reventlo on the trip, the German product. To your point, Gardner-Webb fourth in the preseason poll. They finished in the top five the last three years. The potential is there for Tony Setzer's club. Now Amish tries to show off his potential, wiggling his way through the box. Look at the footwork, and Odell Brown has enough of it. He takes it away. Can Gardner-Webb counter with numbers? Maybe not on that pass. Lily Moose. Good circling of the ball to keep possession. He's the captain by nature of his personality, a player that, Coach Tony Setzer trusts more than anyone on the field, and that's why he's given the captain sleep. Yeah, he is an intangible for this team because he's really an extension of Coach Setzer on the field. He said that he trusts him not only to organize, but when he wants to do something and he yells it out, he knows how to make that happen. Reventlo is way off target. Easy, easy stop for this Campbell defense. Only surrendering 1.2 goals per contest. However, Dustin Fonder had mentioned with some changes in his lineup defensively. He needs them to be locked in these two matches to earn six points. Yeah, and they've had a lot of switching around as far as the personnel goes back there. They had a red card in the game against UNCW that switched it around. They brought in Owen McCoy, who also got a red card. So they've had to switch things around, and they've got some flexibility. But when you can go back to this back four, which is one of the best in the country, you know you're always going to give yourself a shot at keeping a clean sheet and winning. George Badico plays a pretty long ball. That's onside for Amish. Kenny navigating on Brown. There's a promising chip in, swiped away as San Filippo saves a strike. Momo surveys. Amish trying to save it. And that is out for a goal kick. We've seen early Campbell really work the ball wide, as you've mentioned. How has that pressed Gardner-Webb's defense? 
Well, I think that the big part about it is is that there is a big central striker who can test you. In that middle, they have to watch Broussard because he is a big aerial threat. Tony Setzer in your 35. He's searching for happiness every day in his job. That's the biggest part of when he comes into the office. And he's looking for this team not only to be happy, but find success on the defensive end. Well, and that success has been a big part of what he's been able to do. He said that, you know, he's been glad that Gardner-Webb, that through transitional years from NAIA to D2 to D1, have given him years to build up. And I think that faith has been repaid. Like you said, they came into this season knowing that, hey, it's going to be Campbell and High Point up top, but let's get one of those top four spots, get us a home draw and have a go. They've been able to do it the last couple of years. It's just a matter of getting it over the line and, hopefully playing this team again in the playoffs and knocking them off. I think Jake Morris missed his target there as he sends it towards us. Gardner-Webb with the throw. So 15 minutes in, the early sixth-minute strike from Gerard Broussard, the late addition to the lineup. Literally so late. They were coming up the stairs to tell us right before opening kick. But Broussard plays well in this moment. And a free kick earned for the running Bulldogs. Yeah, and you'll notice here just how long they're going to take on these set pieces. This is a real opportunity to get some guys up because otherwise you're going to have to pass your way up there, which is difficult against this Campbell team. So get some big numbers up there, see how high that Campbell line is. Other teams would probably mark the 18. Sebastian Reventlo looking to serve this ball in. That's an easy play for Edu Rodriguez who himself has gone through some ups and downs this year. Six saves against Elon two weeks ago, pitched the shutout on Saturday. And when he's locked in five-plus saves in five matches, he adds a dynamic that Samuel Lechuga had for this program, an all-conference keeper last season. Yeah, Sam Lechuga, of course, is legendary in recent history, you know, led the team to two championships. So for Edu coming into this one, he knew it was going to be difficult to replace, but that's not what they've been looking for necessarily. You don't need an incredible goalkeeper. You just need a solid one. And for large portions of the season, he has been. It's been a little few moments where he's let a ball through him or under his, under his body and let himself down, but you can see the confidence starting to build, and it's pretty easy for one clean sheet to lead to another. Diego Connix, great job shielding off Madondo on the touch. And you see Campbell's back four so connected with their passing, clearing this out. Amish keeps it in play. You talk about the scoring success for Campbell. When they score first, record over 80% in wins. That's the challenge for Gardner-Webb, trailing 1-0. Morris trying to stay on side. And he's granted his wish. That'll result in a corner kick. Last touch by Carlos Jimenez O'Farrell, the Kissimmee, Florida product. And I think, actually, we, of course, we never want to see players get injured, but for Campbell's overall game strategy in this one, I think Broussard coming in is actually a good thing for them because he offers something different down the middle than Tyler Young does. He's caused problems, and it's this aerial game that could very well differentiate these two sides tonight. So Tyler Young called for the service here. Five assists on the year. Ranked just eighth in the team in points in the spring. What a breakout fall season for Young, the redshirt sophomore. Moses Mensa back to Young. There's a little chip into the box over the head of Doty. Played back down Broussard. Morris plays it wide. And now Amish resets. Morris towards the edge of the box. Creates some space with that elbow. Plays it back. Amish. Gardner-Webb. Clenching down defensively and tested Malel Rios, who's all over it. Good work from Rios there to collect that one, not give up a bounce. But that's pretty indicative of what Campbell does with that last opportunity. How many other teams would have had shots inside the box right there? A lot of other ones would have said, it's going to bounce in front of me inside the 18. I'm kicking it towards goal. The fact that they passed it off shows you what Campbell wants to do. They don't want to waste opportunities. But in that instance, maybe somebody should have got a shot earlier. Dustin Fonder taking a page from the Greg Popovich book. Look for the best shot. And his club looking for a 2-0 lead in this first half. George Padico plays it forward. Campbell's back four can certainly swing more into a two-line defense and bring those back two wingers forward. Does expose a hole for a moment as Odell Brown sinks in. And that's something that they work on and what Coach Fonder has told us is when one of those wing backs goes forward, they want the other one back. So you always have three defenders. This is a long run for Odell Brown who cannot keep it in play. And that'll be a throw in just on the edge of the corner flag there. 
So Tony Setzer's team fell one match short of reaching the playoffs this past spring. That's the goal for this club here in the fall, and a one-on-one -on -one start with a schedule that's very promising the rest of the way. This is a, a week for Gardner. If they can earn a point in this game, maybe a point on Saturday, put themselves in great spot to earn that fourth seed. Yeah, and you have to remember in the spring there were only four teams that made it into the playoffs. So this season it's going to be a little bit easier given they're moving back to six. But as far as the way the schedule works out, it not only allows you to get some wins, but also build some momentum for that first playoff match at the beginning of next month. Jake Morris running with his head on fire, sends it forward and is dispossessed. And a nice sliding touch as it wobbles down the line at a Campbell throw. That's Henrik Courtgaard. He brings the physicality to this midfield. 6'3", nearly 200 pounds. Campbell likes the game to play with finesse and some physicality inside the box. They've shown it with plenty of chances on target. The early goal for Gerard Broussard in the sixth minute, the difference, as Frank Momo sends one way out of play. In Gardner Webb's perspective, you're happy to let those chances come towards you. Always rather give the shots up outside the 18 than inside, and given that there's so many numbers screening in front of the box, it's going to be hard even to get shots away from those areas. Here's Melo Rios, who only started four matches in the spring. He was in a rotating goalkeeper competition. Emerged due to injury as the full-time keeper this fall. He's played quite well, especially as we start conference play, allowing under a goal and a half per contest. Madondo's all by himself up there, chasing down Rodriguez, who wisely sends it long. Amis challenging Brown, and that results in a Campbell throw. Oh, no, Gardner-Webb throw, in fact. Dustin Fonder in year seven searches to build on this success here at home. 22-2-4 at Eeks Athletics Complex. How has his club been so dominant inside these grounds? Well, you have to be honest with yourself and say that if a team wasn't good, it doesn't mean you get home wins. So half of it, a lot of it, is the fact that Campbell have just been really good recently. But also they've made it a point to say at home we're going to own these games. These are going to be ours. They're going to be difficult. We're not going to just give wins up when we play at home. We're going to make the other team earn it, and if so, that's the way it goes. We have a late substitution granted here as Corel Medza, the Houston, Texas product, checks in. And exiting the match for the moment, Ryan Madondo, the graduate senior, one of 14 veteran seniors on this roster. Now, it was too full. Coach Setzer said it's 14 players, but not many of those have had the full four years of experience. So it's a challenging trend for his veteran heavy roster. Yeah, and that's the thing is you talk to coaches right now, and they pretty much all tell you that they're hurting for experience. But in this sense, they have a lot of upperclassmen. Here's a promising shot on target. Knocked down to Sordo. Sordo goes for target, and Gardner-Webb ties it up. Eighth career goal for Amani Sordo, and it's 1-1 midway through the first half. And you can see just how much that means to him and this team. That's exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to just take the chances when they get them. If you can get the ball in and around that 18-yard box, just have a shot. In that instance, he hits it perfectly. It goes in exactly where he wants it to. Incredible shot, but so far executed perfectly as far as the game plan goes. Off a second chance, and Sordo curls it past Rodriguez. Yeah, it's off the half volley as well, so he waits for that bounce, and it sits nicely. You can see the dip right there at the end. I mean, you can't fault Rodriguez in that one. That one was always going to go top bends, but as far as Gardner-Webb goes, like we said, want to keep it low scoring. One nil game means you're always in it, and now they can build on this and maybe go out and find that second one, or at least try and fight for a point. And his eighth match converts that first career goal, and what a strike for Gardner-Webb here in the 23rd minute. A long ball for Tyler Young, the conference's leader in goals scored. And Zach, we had mentioned the difference in winning and losing for this Gardner-Webb team, converting on clinical chances. That was an uncharacteristic play outside the 18, but it's converted for a 1-1 tie. Yeah, and I mean, I've already said once that you'll let teams have shots from outside the 18-yard box. In truth, coaches don't want you really to have shots from anywhere. If you're going to give them up, outside the 18's better, but that just shows you all it takes is a moment of individual brilliance, and you can just have the game tied up instantly. So from Campbell's perspective, don't want to give up the shot there, but honestly, how many times is that ball going to go in? That's the challenge for Rodriguez between the pipes. 
Had a 1.25 goals against average entering this match. And that's not necessarily on the keeper either. That's quality attacking play. Yeah, you got to put up your hands sometimes and just applaud because that was a fantastic shot. We may see that one later on in the year. Reventlo in space plays it out wide. Good job by Moses Mensa, the two-time all-conference defender to come forward. Young searching for space. We've seen Gardner-Webb draw a lot of attention on Tyler Young. Seven goals and five assists. How have they made life challenging for what could be an all-conference striker? Yeah, over on the left-hand side of your screen, he's running towards the ball now, but the man marking him has got that neon armband, Lily Moose. He's staying close to him and making life difficult. Brown, now inside the box. Can Gardner-Webb take the lead here? So we have an offside flag on the initial pass to Brown. Coach Tony sets are three keys for his program. He wants more offside flags drawn against his team to push the attack forward and not play as much inside their own defensive end. Yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes stats are indicative of things you're doing. So when you have a lot of offside flags, of course that means there's something to work on, but that also means that you're getting a lot of balls forward. So there's a, a double-edged sword to that. And so the more balls they're getting forward, that means that Campbell doesn't have the ball. It means that you're keeping them out of your final third. Makes you wonder which side of the sword is dull as it's 1-1. Here, 25 minutes into this first half. And what Gardner-Webb can't do here is hope that this will be a high-scoring match. What they got to do is try You see them right now trying to build, but they got to make sure they don't expose themselves. Amish into open territory, finds Young, challenging Lillamoose defensively. Young gets to the corner past Catherall. Played off the knee of a defender, and critical work by Rodriguez to keep it. Had to be very careful on that one because as a defender, when you're facing your own goal, a ball can go anywhere when it bounces off of you. So we see that Young comes in, does a really good job to take it in line, but really you want a player to be able to get a boot on this before it makes it that far because even if it hits one of your own men, it could very well end up in your own goal. Malel Rios tested on that bouncing strike. We have a quick time called here. An injury substitution as Broussard exits and Braden Teller enters the match. And a chance for a water hydration break for Gardner-Webb as well. And this is going to switch us back to the way that Campbell were going to start in this game. That means that Young's going to be in the middle of that front three. Teller's playing on the right-hand side, and Ami slides into the middle. So it's a very different look because they lose some of that physical presence up top, but also Amish is playing centrally now. So he's probably going to be pulling more of the strings rather than dribbling out wide. So Gardner-Webb searching for a critical road point in this matchup, chasing Campbell and High Point at the top of the tables. 23rd minute goal from Imani Sordo, a huge infusion of confidence for Gardner-Webb. And the way we've kind of lined up this match makes it seem as though that Gardner-Webb have the goal. They're just going to try and hold off and say, hey, look, we don't want any more to do with this. Let's keep it 1-1. That's not the case at all. If they can see this game out and keep on to the ball, maybe get a second, that's great. But just keep the ball. That's the big point of this game so far is that as long as you have it, that means Campbell doesn't. That means that they're not going to have as many opportunities to score against you. And Gardner-Webb's last win in this facility, it was a 1-0 final. Simone Olsen with the game winner in the second half. It was a low-scoring affair. Campbell that season struggled to qualify for the postseason. However, ever since, they've been a team that's won a title, been to a final as well, won two titles, in fact. They've had quite a run in the Big South over the last four to five years. Yeah, Campbell has kind of become the gold standard alongside High Point, looking to do it in the regular season, which is something they have not yet been able to do under Coach Vonder. They technically split it with High Point a year ago, but if they can win this game, they might be able to take it themselves. Morris searching for space. Plays it wide for Tello, who realizes that's his target. And Campbell trying to find its rhythm with the substitute, Braden Teller, the redshirt junior out of Wake Forest. Again, Teller's a guy who's been playing some at right back last season in the spring and also some of this one coming in for Momo. So he's playing a little bit further forward, but I played against this guy in high school, so I know that he knows exactly what he's supposed to be doing along that front three, a very good attacker. Along with Zach Burley, the former defender at Cape Fear Christian High School. Now he's in a broadcast booth, if that tells you the story. Evan Budjovic here with you on ESPN+. Plus. Thanks for joining in tonight, guys. Yeah, that tells you how good I was. Odell Brown gets back defensively. He's been challenged by the right front of Campbell's attack, really pushing the line back. As Amish singles up Catherall. Here's a promising strike in, and defensively, Cole Sanfilippo saves a goal and earns a corner kick for Campbell. 
Yeah, I can tell you from personal experience that when a ball comes in that quickly, you're not even thinking about it. It's, it's a blur, and then it hits you, and you just hope that whenever it hit you that it went somewhere that wasn't the goal. That was an excellent ball by Taylor, which shows you how he can get the ball into good areas, but defensively from Gardner-Webb, solid. Jake Morris to trigger this corner. Sends a chip shot deep, punched away by Rios. And now a promising ball forward. Unable to keep it in play, however, is Corral Medza, the Houston, Texas product. And that was good by Rios. You don't always need your goalkeeper to get it perfect, but just do enough. He did enough there to get his gloves to it and then get it away from goal. So don't always expect, hey, the goalkeeper has to rise up, grab it, bring it down. As long as he gets it away from goal, his job is done. His job is to keep this game even at one apiece. A six-minute strike for Broussard of Campbell and a 23rd-minute equalizer for Sordo. Amish chips it wide. Morris trying to track it down. And all of a sudden, that substitution with the injury to Gerard Broussard has put Campbell in a bit of an irky position trying to find its rhythm offensively. Yeah, and that's still a role that Amish is trying to figure out playing centrally. So we'll see how he settles into it. But also, it just means that this is a good match in order to try and get him up to speed with that. Dustin Fonder's goals for this week. Get more shots on target, collect less cards, and be focused on the defensive end. That challenge has been put to the test here in this first half. What a promising ball to Medza as Rodriguez wisely lets it roll inside the 18. Yeah, Rodriguez showing a good balance between coming off your line and staying inside your 18. Almost got it wrong there, but then decided to let it roll into his own 18-yard box, which was the better option between just booting it the other direction. Frank Momo sends it forward to Morris. Challenging possession here for Momo. He's double teamed by Catherall. As we approach the 15-minute mark of this first half, and that earns a corner kick. We've talked a lot about what Gardner-Webb wants to do. For Campbell, though, it doesn't really change. You know you're going to get chances in this match. As good as the offense is, you're going to get five, six, seven good shots on target. Just need one of those to go in. Morris with his first goal against Presbyterian now looks to serve this one in. Campbell's had promising chances on corner kicks all night. Left-footed winger sends it in. Ooh, chipped high. Connix nearly had it. And all of a sudden, Campbell's had two straight corner kicks with an open man unmarked, just unable to finish. Yeah, and that's what we're talking about as far as those chances go. You know you're going to get them. It's just a matter of taking them when they do. So don't they're not going to hold their heads low whenever they miss a corner kick or a shot goes wide. They're going to hold their heads high knowing that, hey, next time it comes around, I'm going to put it in. And for a guy like Diego Konix, he knows he probably should have put that one on target. And I promise you if he gets another one, he probably will. Three goals and one assist for Diego this year. Goalkeeper Malel Rios lets his lines head towards midfield to send this ball away. Rios replaces a three-year starter and Daniel Husa, who led the Big South in saves in 2019. That's big shoes to fill. Granted, the, the stat of saves isn't always the best indicative of success. His teams get tested him on the defensive line. Now can Morris provide some ammunition for Campbell? Morris gets to the corner around Catherall and sends it wide, searching for Teller. This is the 11th-ranked scoring offense in the country. They're 13th in points. How do they replicate that success after a sixth-minute strike? Not as many quality chances since. Yeah, the big thing I think that they're figuring out right now is just the change in personnel. I mean, they're missing a couple of key players attackingly and in midfield, and now they're playing with players out of positions where they would normally play. I don't think that's that big of a concern because for Dustin Fonder, I think he sees this as, hey, we can probably win this game. Let's try and do it maybe in a way we wouldn't normally. Lillamoose with a great dispossession. Plays it forward to Medza. He's the speed winger up top for Gardner-Webb. They're searching for strikes with three starters out tonight via injury. It's been a rotating lineup for Tony Setzer, who carries a roster of 75 with a JV squad as well. Gearing up for Saturdays in the Big South as these teams meet on the pitch of Spangler Stadium, football-wise, this Saturday. It's the barbecue bowl. You more of an Eastern fan or Western barbecue fan? Well, see, I think I'm actually a little biased. I think you're more of a neutral arbiter being you're from California. You've been here for a little while now. Do you have a preference one way or the other? You can't just flip the question back to me as Jake Morris sends it to the far side. I will say the vinegar base does taste more sweet and savory. See, I'm a down east boy, so if you ask me, it's not really going to be a fair answer. 
1-1, approaching the 12-minute mark of this first half. Great dispossession by Lillamoose to win the ball with his front foot and plays it back into the middle. Last thing we'll say about barbecue that I think everyone here can agree on, as long as it's not mustard-based, we'll be all right. Definitely an agreement on that one. Both teams prepare to make substitutes late in this half. You see Dustin Fonder searching for answers as his club sits on six points, the only team in the conference with a 2-0 record. They need a quality performance tonight. Yeah, they, they've done really good so far, but I think that the big thing he talked about was we want to be able to have that ace up our sleeve before we go to high point on the road because what you don't want to do is have a player missing and then have to try something out for the first time against the best other team in the conference. So maybe you're seeing something here of saying, hey, let's try something else differently down the stretch of this game against a Gardner-Webb team that we feel like we can beat. If it doesn't work, we'll bring on, switch things back up to how we're used to and push that way. It's a little bit risky, but they're also dealing with a lot right now. So we'll see just how long these players stay on the field and if maybe they even go up for even more switching as far as personnel goes. You see Gardner-Webb sinks nine back defensively along with their top striker trying to slow down a Campbell attack that has led the conference in goals the last two years. He thought after six minutes with the goal from Broussard, this could be a 3-0 type of match, but Gardner-Webb has found its chances and a critical finish by Sordo to even it up. Yeah, that was the biggest point of this match. Whenever they were able to last that next 10-15. Morris goes for goal and not even close that time. You love the, the stick to of Jake Morris to try to create something after scoring his first career goal on Saturday. Here's a substitution as Owen McCoy checks in. He gives Jamie Lamb a breather with 10 minutes to go in this first half. Yeah, Lamb has to come in because of some missing players in midfield, so that's more of a defensive midfielder they've been having in there. Now what they're going to do is put McCoy in at center back and slide Diego Konix into that midfield six role. Gardner-Webb has had extreme difficulties winning on the road the last three years. Win percentage below 33%. They would love to earn some points tonight as they've neutralized Campbell's attack in the final 20 minutes of this half. Odell Brown comes back in on that back wing position. He's been excellent, especially slowing down Morris and Teller on that side as he plays a beautiful one-touch and a sliding dispossession. It is out of play. Excellent coverage by Basafi Doti. That just shows you how the combinations on defense can work. The furthest man back was Morris because he tracked the run. Doty had to come across. So it doesn't matter. You get past one defender, there's just going to be another one there to dispossess you. It's like playing Battleship. You sink one, you find another right next to you. You just got to find the good combinations to get success. Can Gardner-Webb add and a lead, in fact? Ravetlo rolls one in, and Rodriguez widely goes off his mark to knock it down. The running Bulldogs not afraid to shoot from distance in this match. It did result in an early goal, and they're challenging Edu Rodriguez tonight. It's going to be difficult to get the ball inside the box against this Campbell team if it's not from a set piece. So those areas, you're not too disappointed because you're saying, while it's unlikely that Campbell, rather Gardner-Webb will have as many chances as Campbell, just the way things are going, still doesn't mean that you have to put your head down if you miss one. And me searching for Badico. Gets a body on it, still loose in the box, and Rios finally gets his paws on it. It's a dangerous play for a junior goalkeeper who's had his bugaboo moments, allowing two goals per match. Yeah, and he nearly got bit there on that one for coming out so far because that, that bounce goes the other direction, and there's an empty netter finish for Badico. So that's the sort of balance that you have to strike as a goalkeeper is deciding if you come out, if it looks like you're not going to win it, get back to your line as quickly as possible. And in 38 career matches, Badico knows how to finish in those clinical moments. It's, it's a neat contrast. You have a Campbell team with veteran players who have played multiple years against a Gardner-Webb team with 23 upperclassmen who have very little experience of playing time. Nonetheless, we have a 1-1 equal match and a beautiful Wednesday night in the Big South Conference. Across the league, you have High Point and Upstate battling for what could be a playoff preview. Gardner-Webb wants to join that discussion, and the point tonight would do it. Morris sprinting all over the field. Catherall shields him off and plays it back to his keeper. We've seen some really good stuff from Catherall today. He's already once pushed Amish off the ball the same way with Morris there. When someone's at full speed and you have to change directions, keeping up with them's hard, pushing them off balance without fouling them's even harder. Jimenez... 
fighting for it with Moses Menson. And that's a tough matchup to win against the possible All-American candidate. Mensa runs forward in the attacking end. He's shown the ability to serve one in in this moment. Finds Young, through to Amish, and Morris hits the keeper. What an opportunity for Jake Morris. Yeah, that was a real solid chance here. And, you know, you expect the power from Jake Morris because that's what he does. He thinks, hey, this ball's going to fall to me and I can smash it home. Hindsight's 20-20, but if he stops that ball rather than puts his foot through it, there might the goalkeeper is already out of the equation. You might could just chip it into the net and avoid having to worry about a flying goalkeeper. It's Campbell's seventh shot and third on target in this matchup, putting pressure on Rodriguez. Here's a long ball deep, headed towards the corner. And we have a corner kick. That is last touch by Gardner-Webb. There's the size. You mentioned Owen McCoy checking in at 6-2 putting a lot of pressure on this running Bulldog defense. And that's a guy that they haven't seen yet this season, so he's already kind of making some waves in there. And had it not been for the deflection, it might have gone in. Nearing six minutes to play in this first half, Tyler Young, the conference's leader in goals, now looks to be the assist maker. Serves one of the front post. Headed through and missing his target, Basafi Doti. Another one ball at the top, at the apex of the service. That's something Dustin Fonder will certainly like from his team, but not the result he wants with the goal. Yeah, and you're seeing that these headers are coming when players are at full extension, like you say, and that's going to play into the hands of Campbell, who have a height advantage, just slightly so inside the 18-yard box. The big point, though, on those set pieces is the services have been really good. You want them to be lofted up in the air where someone can make a play on them because if they're low, driven into the front post, it's just a lot harder. We've seen some of them go that way, but so far the set piece delivery can feel really positive from Campbell's perspective. Nonetheless, Campbell with nine shots, nothing to show for it since the sixth minute of the first half, a Gerard Broussard goal. And Dylan Dominguez, a graduate senior from Homestead, Florida, checks in for Gardner-Webb. So much of the game is confidence, and you felt like when Campbell scored that first goal, he said, yeah, you think you're going to go on and win this game. Gardner-Webb gets one, and you say, you know what, it still feels like Campbell's going to win this game. But the longer and longer that it stays at one-to-one, -one, the more it creeps in, hey, they might not, Gardner-Webb might get out of here with a draw. Hey, Gardner-Webb's had a few good chances. They might find that second one, and that's the sort of creeping mindset that they want to put into Campbell and sow those seeds of doubt. Those seeds could loom into Gardner-Webb, earning not only a win in their opening conference matchup, but a draw against arguably the preseason favorites along with High Point in this league. What a difficult week starting last Saturday. Lose 3-0 at High Point, the reigning champions. He face the defending champions previously here on a Wednesday night, and that's what Tony Setzer mentioned coming in, the importance of earning one point in this week. This is a golden opportunity with four minutes to play in the opening half. Yeah, and they did really good starting off against High Point. They just let up those two goals in the first half. That was crucial to this one is not letting up two. Letting up one is acceptable, but if you give up two, it's going to make your life really hard because even if you do manage to get one, which is so difficult, that doesn't mean that you're still going to be in the lead. So they've done what they've needed to, and they've really set themselves up to success if they can hold this next four minutes. That's the challenge of stopping the 11th-ranked scoring offense in the country, two goals per contest. And they can score in bunches, three on Saturday in the win over Presbyterian. It was a very business-like road trip for Dustin Fonder's club. They went to bed at an early time, woke up with focus, and that's what he wanted to see from his team, playing a club that is stout defensively throughout the years. As Young nearly gets a foot on it and cleared high into the sky by Samuel Rittner. It results in a throw-in. Yeah, that was just Young ghosting in there in between the lines. Not the bad ghosting either, the good time. Exactly, and that's exactly what you want to see from him because whereas Broussard probably would have been driving in there, a big presence, different look with Young. You see the bobbing hair of gold. That's Caleb Martinez checking in, the senior midfielder from Florida. And he's the guy you're going to want to watch for because his last match, he hasn't played in a little while due to an injury, was an absolute screamer on this field. Ooh, stick of the screamer. That was a promising ball in, searching for Young. Headed down by Connix to Campbell. Mensa. It's a neat touch out to Teller, who plays in space. Teller back into the box for Young. Wants a Oh, he wanted the PK. Not going to get it. And it's one away by Gardner-Webb. Samuel Rittner has been busy on that defensive back line. A lot of chances, not only with crosses for Campbell, but playing in space. 
They just have not been able to get a foot on it in a promising spot. Yeah, and that's like I said, that's okay. Just keep trying. Something will fall. Quality touch back to Young. He goes for goal and nearly hits the front post. Goal kick for Gardner-Webb. They are hanging on for dear life in the final two and a half minutes. And you can't overstate how big of a deal this is because as Coach Setzer can say right now, he already knows what his team talk is at halftime. He knows what he's going to say, but if you give up a goal, that whole thing changes, and now all the momentum you've built is gone. So can't overstate how big this next two minutes is. The Cliff Notes version is this team needs to earn points with the easier part of the conference slate upcoming for Gardner-Webb. UNC Asheville and Longwood, the next two contests, both at home. Very winnable games based on previous proceedings. Well, that's really funny because actually both teams are playing the same two teams in their next two games. So this will give you a really good marker of what they can do. Sordo searching to collect the chip forward. He had a clinical finish in the 23rd minute just inside the box. That evened us up at one apiece. Gardner-Webb has not earned a point in this facility in four years and no win in five previous seasons. An interesting 90 minutes, sorry, 45 minutes to begin this first half. There's a turn on target. Dylan Dominguez gets the touchback from Nardi. You mentioned Teller's versatility. He's now more of a defensive midfielder on that left side of the field. As Young plays the 10 position, trying to search for possible shots on target. Yeah, and it's very clear that these last few seconds here that Gardner-Webb is trying to hold on to the ball and get one last opportunity. So Campbell's saying, hey, look, we'll ride it out to halftime. Let's keep it steady. They're pinning back their wingers because of that. Final minute at the East Athletics Complex. Gardner-Webb and Campbell all even at one apiece. Here's a long ball for Caleb Martinez, who's shielded off by Dylan Dominguez. The captain, Lillamoos, starts the attack. Revent low, plays in space. Here's a promising long ball. He wants Brown. That's a tough speed battle with Mensa. I think he tripped Mensa there. And there should be a foul the other way on Gardner-Webb. You know, the big thing Gardner-Webb are complaining about here is the fact that the assistant referee didn't flag for it, and they're saying, hey, you were right there. If you said it's a throw-in, why isn't it a throw-in? So the head referee with the decision that time, overseeding the proceedings. That's Brandon Gardner on the call. He's joined by Hudson Owens and Larry Stroud as we tick down the final seconds of this first half. Gardner-Webb searching for points on the road through 45 minutes. They've done their job. 1-1 here at Eeks Athletics Complex. We'll break down the first 45 and give you a sense of what's to come when we return here on ESPN+. Plus. In class or on game day, we compete towards degrees, championships, excellence on every level. More than 4,000 student athletes. We are the Big South, where winners are made. In class or on game day, we compete towards degrees, championships, excellence on every level. More than 4,000 student athletes. We are the Big South, where winners are made. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Big things are happening this year across the South, from the mountains to the coast. The fast are getting faster. The strong are getting stronger. And the best is getting better. Get ready to raise your expectations. Get ready for something big. Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Big South Sports. It's bow time. The workday might be ending, but your family's hunger is still gearing up for the night shift. Now you could unload groceries, chop, dice, mince, preheat, heat, heat, slap around the smoke detector, and then celebrate with a big old pile of dishes. Or you could just drop a big bow box on it. Because when you can feed the family with 12 Supremes, Fixins, Biscuits, and tea, you can clock out and still spend some well-earned quality time with a delicious dinner. 
it's bow time. In the last 10 years, Emerge Orthopedics has really been on the forefront of doing orthopedic urgent care. Uh, we realize that a lot of these accidents happen after hours and patients want to get seen and get diagnosed and get taken care of. Emerge has a number of orthopedic urgent cares throughout the triangle and some of which are open seven days a week, open till nine o'clock at night. And that's been a huge benefit to patients. Patients routinely give us compliments on that and the care they receive there. Welcome back inside Eeks Athletics Complex. A 1-1 equal score through the first 45 minutes as Gardner-Webb searches for critical points in Big South Conference play. Campbell, meanwhile, the top team in the regular season. They have some work to do to pull ahead. Let's roll through some of the highlights of the first half. And Zach, early in the sixth minute, Gerard Broussard. Boy, does he step up and finish clinically. Yeah, this was a big moment for him, especially having just come on. He didn't think he was going to be in the starting lineup. He takes the chance perfectly, and that's difficult to do, especially given how early in the game it is. You wouldn't have blamed him if he missed it, but he was clinical here finishing that rebound. Broussard, a late addition to the lineup within 10 minutes of start time, and he missed no time. How about this finish by Sordo evening us up at one? Yeah, this is so well taken. He waits for the half volley, fires at home. I mean, that is, in my opinion, sports center worthy. Gardner-Webb, 1-1 one, one, as they are look for second match of points on the road in Big South Conference play. 45 minutes in, we got to find a winner of this one. We'll figure it out after this break with some thoughts from us in the booth right after this on ESPN+. Plus. Along with Zach Burley breaking down this first half, Campbell and Gardner-Webb tied at one apiece. Bit of an upset through the first 45 minutes. The running Bulldogs with a strike from Imani Sordo to tie up this match. What must Campbell do in the second half, Zach, to pull away? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a matter of keeping a cool head. I, like we said, there's going to be chances in this match. They don't have to worry about that. It's just a matter of making sure that you're having chances. If you go through a 15-minute period and you don't really get anything good going forward, there needs to be a switch. Otherwise, when the chances come, just take them. You'll know there'll be enough. Just wait for that one, put it home, you'll be fine. Campbell, meanwhile, the six-minute strike from Gerard Broussard. He's battling a bit of an injury. We'll see if we get many minutes for him in the second half. However, offensively, 
A lot of promising chances inside the box, just not able to finish just yet. What's the adjustment they must make in the second half? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a big time for, for both Campbell and Gardner-Webb offensively. That's where we're going to have a game winner. But for Gardner-Webb, they got to settle in here. they got to keep their heads cool, their minds concentrated on what they have ahead because Campbell are going to throw the works at him when we come out of this halftime break. So keep a calm head, take your chances if you get them, but know that you've got the draw as it stands. So at this point, it's all out there to lose. Just hold on to it. Big South play. This is the third match for these clubs. Plenty decided for conference standing sake. We'll break that all down when we come back on ESPN+. Plus. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. It's bow time. The workday might be ending, but your family's hunger is still gearing up for the night shift. Now you could unload groceries, chop, dice, mince, preheat, heat, heat, slap around the smoke detector, and then celebrate with a big old pile of dishes. Or you could just drop a big bow box on it. Because when you can feed the family with 12 Supremes, Fixins, Biscuits, and tea, you can clock out and still spend some well-earned quality time with a delicious dinner. It's bow time. In the last 10 years, Emerge Orthopedics has really been on the forefront of doing orthopedic urgent care. Uh, we realize that a lot of these accidents happen after hours and patients want to get seen and get diagnosed and get taken care of. Emerge has a number of orthopedic urgent cares throughout the triangle and some of which are open seven days a week, open till nine o'clock at night. And that's been a huge benefit to patients. Patients routinely give us compliments on that and the care they receive there. We are not merely an institution of higher education. We are transforming lives and empowering students to become leaders leaders in our communities, in our state, and throughout the world. Leaders in innovation. Leaders in service to our neighbors. Join our movement. Join our community. Join our mission. Lead with purpose. Lead with Campbell. It's bow time. The workday might be ending, but your family's hunger is still gearing up for the night shift. Now you could unload groceries, chop, dice, mince, preheat, heat, heat, slap around the smoke detector, and then celebrate with a big old pile of dishes. Or you could just drop a big bow box on it. Because when you can feed the family with 12 Supremes, Fixins, Biscuits, and tea, you can clock out and still spend some well-earned quality time with a delicious dinner. It's bow time. Taking a look at Gardner-Webb's huddle, Tony Setzer in year 35. They try to break a streak of... Four straight losses here in Bowie's Creek. There they are. We're talking it out together. And Campbell all time in this series, 14 wins. Four and two as well on that side of the record. Zach, the big key, though, seven straight unbeaten or seven, seven unbeaten matches for Campbell all time. How does Gardner-Webb build on this momentum of the first half and earn points in the second? Yeah, I mean, really, they've got a lot to look forward to here because they know it's going to be a difficult half, but they hold a lot of the cards. Campbell's going to be forced to maybe go out of their comfort zone and, and be in a position they weren't expecting to when this game started. So for them, it's just a matter of sticking to the game plan. Nothing's changed for them since the starting lineup. You know what's interesting right now? The Big South Conference standings. Because five teams have a win on their tally in the first two matches. It's a race to get in the top six this year for the tournament. You see Campbell and High Point and Longwood at the top right now through two games played. Who are some teams to watch for as we gear to the next part of conference? Yeah, I mean, like the big part here to think about is you're going to want to watch for the likes of uh, Presbyterian. There's still something in there for them. Upstate as well. Hasn't had the best of starts, but they can definitely shape things up. So watch for those two. They might slot in. Remember, six teams make it in this year rather than the four we saw in the spring. The magic number is six. Right now the magic number is 1-1 one, one through the first half of play. When we come back, the second half on ESPN+. Plus. Power isn't born. It's built over time. 
For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. It's bow time. The workday might be ending, but your family's hunger is still gearing up for the night shift. Now you could unload groceries, chop, dice, mince, preheat, heat, heat, slap around the smoke detector, and then celebrate with a big old pile of dishes. Or you could just drop a big bow box on it. Because when you can feed the family with 12 Supremes, Fixins, Biscuits, and tea, you can clock out and still spend some well-earned quality time with a delicious dinner. It's bow time. In the last 10 years, Emerge Orthopedics has really been on the forefront of doing orthopedic urgent care. Uh, we realize that a lot of these accidents happen after hours and patients want to get seen and get diagnosed and get taken care of. Emerge has a number of orthopedic urgent cares throughout the triangle and some of which are open seven days a week, open till nine o'clock at night and that's been a huge benefit to patients. Patients routinely give us compliments on that and the care they receive there. We are not merely an institution of higher education. We are transforming lives and empowering students to become leaders. Leaders in our communities, in our state, and throughout the world. Leaders in innovation. Leaders in service to our neighbors. Join our movement. Join our community. Join our mission. Lead with purpose. Lead with Campbell. It's bow time. The workday might be ending, but your family's hunger is still gearing up for the night shift. Now you could unload groceries, chop, dice, mince, preheat, heat, heat, slap around the smoke detector, and then celebrate with a big old pile of dishes. Or you could just drop a big bow box on it. Because when you can feed the family with 12 Supremes, Fixins, Biscuits, and tea, you can clock out and still spend some well-earned quality time with a delicious dinner. It's bow time. <laughs> Welcome back to a beautiful night in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Under the lights here at the Eeks Athletics Complex, Zach Burley and Evan Budrovich alongside me as we are sitting at one-to-one -one in this Big South Conference matchup featuring the Fighting Camels and the Running Bulldogs of Gardner-Webb. Two teams are about to go out onto the field, Evan. We talked about this during the halftime break and in during the first half. This second half, largely in the hands of Campbell. They kind of write their own fate here. They're a team that's really to work through some injuries in this matchup. Key players not available for Dustin Fonder tonight. And you see right there leading the charge, Frank Momo. He wants to organize his unit. They've had some chances inside the box, some critical services in. The big key, as you mentioned, is being mentally focused and tough in those moments, something that Gardner-Webb struggled with this year. That's been Campbell's strength. Can they capitalize on that here in the second half? And something you talked about was a couple of key players missing, and Gardner-Webb's also facing that tonight. A few players that they don't have with them, and they're going to have to deal without. So it will be the running Bulldogs to get us underway. They have a big 45 here in a week that Coach said they wanted to at least get a point out of. It's Corral Medza to get us underway. All we await, Brandon Gardner's whistle. He had a whistle malfunction there, by the way, if you just noticed. There it is, and we are underway in Bowie's Creek. Just to build off what you were saying, Evan, Gardner-Webb are also dealing with some injuries. They've got a few key players, including some key defenders, out for them tonight. Omar Budaka, one of the starters on that back line, is not available tonight. Three starters out for the running Bulldogs. This is quite a challenge for both these teams. Five games in 14 days for Gardner-Webb. So it's a battle of attrition, not just battling the best scoring team in the league. Here's Brown facing down Minza. Lays it off. Early chances here for the running Bulldogs. Lily Moose. Dominguez. Now Brown. That unfortunately hit the head of Brown. He was trying to center it with his chest. He's played very far on the back line on that right back position. He's coming more forward in this half as more of an attacking midfielder. And both these coaches making adjustments. Diego Koenig's now playing more up top for Campbell offensively. You hinted at that this week with Dustin Fonder as he tries to shuffle the cards and, and find some scoring chances. 
And Evan, we've seen here through these early stages the fact that Gardner-Webb actually came out swinging there early. Were you surprised to see that from them? I love the attacking play. They are not settling in and swamping in nine players inside the 18. They want to be assertive offensively. Tony Setzer mentioned his team has to be mentally tough this week. That's put on display tonight. Morris leaves his man behind, chips it in, beaten away. Only as far as Mensa. Now Lamb spots Momo on the far side. Amish, top of the box, takes it in line, lays it off for his fellow Frenchman. Chipped in, punched away. Badico! Early response for the Fighting Camels, and it's George Badico. The reaction says it all. The senior in his 38th career match takes advantage of a mistake by Malel Rios. In the first half, Badico was stopped on his second chance opportunity. This time, critical patience by Badico, because as this ball sneaks out, it's all about the one-time touch. He puts it on target, and there's your lead for Campbell. George Badico, a defensive midfielder who does the dirty work for Campbell, has gotten a career assist, but never a career goal. He's there at the moment when he needs it, and Campbell retake the lead. Evan, very similar start to the one we saw in the first half. Gardner-Webb got to be disappointed with the way things come out so far. The challenge for Gardner-Webb here is how many bodies do you bring forward from the midfield position? Because if you leave your back line exposed as Jake Morris looks to flank from the left side, it does create some chances for that 10th man up top to really catch the ball and set up his attackers just by playing it in the air. Let's not forget, this is an almost identical start to the one we saw in the first half. Gardner-Webb brought it back once before. It might be able to here in the second half. Momo. The that, goal scorer, Badico. And to your point, Gardner-Webb had not scored a first half goal all season. Their success had come in the second half, so they'll need a second half goal here to extend this one. Jake Morris. Services one in. Amish. Straight at Rios. So with Gardner-Webb settling its back four so deep and in front of the keeper, Rios, they have not been able to mark players coming in from the midfield forward for Campbell. That's an exposed flaw in their defense. They're going to sacrifice to really play those balls up high on the crosses in. So players like Amish and Badico can settle in with those second chances and balls played more to the middle of the box. They're going to have good chances like that. One of the things we've seen here in the second half is it looks like Gardner-Webb has gone to a back five. Can you tell us a little bit about how that might help them be able to keep this game as low scoring as possible? More man marking. That's clearly been a struggle for them in the first half. We saw the seven, eight shots Campbell had, a multiple on target. Unfortunately, when you play a Campbell team where so many different options can score goals, it's difficult to pick your poison. Do you put bodies on top to guard Koenigs with his size? Do you try to center on Tyler Young, who could be the striker of the year in this conference? There's a lot of different weapons as there's a clear foul, and that'll give Campbell possession. You mentioned this, Evan, 10 different players for Campbell with a goal on the season, another six with multiple goals on the season. So they can hurt you, not just through the open run of play, but through set pieces, and they've got a lot of guys who can do it. Those 27 goals right now fifth in the country. There's a reason why this team scores. It's not the years of Thibaut Jaquel leading the country in scoring. It is a balanced attack, and that puts a lot of pressure on the defensive back line. Here's Morris once again on his right. Driven across to Amish. Momo with some space around Dominguez, beaten away by Catherall. Starting to see Campbell settle into an offensive setup here. They're clearly not content with just a one-goal lead. That's Dustin Fonder's mantra. He wants this team to score three to four per contest, and that's the only way they're going to win games because you've seen the back four defensively be so compact for Campbell. No easy shots on target. The more they can extend their lead, the more they can play with the midfielders forward. And that's a style that Dustin Fonder likes. Here's George Badico. Koenix up from center back. Brown does just enough, draws the foul. Building off what you were saying, Campbell on seven different occasions this season have scored at least three goals. And in all of them, they are undefeated. So the game plan, very clear for the fighting Camels. Get three, you're probably safe. And Gardner-Webb has just one match with two goals. It was one of their two victories over VMI this year. So their style of play is a little more muck it up, play organized passing in the midfield. Coach Tony Setzer does like how his team has distributed the ball. He said it's a beautiful game to watch. It just hasn't resulted in the goal scored enough to keep up with the competition. 
Driven across, straight to Momo. And now Konix slips on the field. One of the rare instances where the turf monster came up to bite Konix. He's quite a physical specimen. Momo spots Amish out wide. Looks for the cross on his left. Just looking for Konix, but intercepted. Another nice play by Lily Moose, who has been all over the middle of the field tonight. Not necessarily marking a defender, but keeping his feet in position to make plays. Mensa, Campbell on a good string of possession here. Looking to cap it off with two. And of course, the longer they have the ball, it means that Gardner Webb don't. Brown rises up. Morris fires one with his left, ripples it off the crossbar. Amish, not done yet. Gets past one, back stick, and Brown can see it out. We've seen that from Morris today. He has got a cannon for a boot. That's three shots that have been hit with absolute precision as this ball's bending back towards the top of the post. That's what you want to see. And certainly for Morris, a quality look. Sometimes as a, an attacking player, you want to be overly aggressive, and this is what exactly what he does here. Wins the ball out of the air and immediately goes to his powerful left foot. It's bending back towards the post and no chance for Rios to stop it. We got to speak with Coach Fonder about the progression that they've seen from Morris, taking all of that raw talent, putting it into something that fits into their system. And, of course, that's a difficult move. A lot of people think it's an easy jump from one level to the next, but the JUCO level is a big transition to the D1 in this league in particular. Dustin Fonder equated it to a three-year transformation. Year one, you get comfortable with a player. Year two, you grow weary of them. Year three, you get sick and tired of them and want to move them out of the program with all the years they've been there. But that's the growth that a, a junior college player can bring. Dustin Fonder's had success in that realm, bringing in quality players. Morris got it started with an assist against Radford. That really got his scoring going. Followed it up with a goal against Presbyterian and clearly attack-minded tonight. For a long time, Morris was one of those few in the starting lineup who had yet to register a point. Managed to get him underway against PC, as you mentioned, and he's looked lively tonight. As it stands, this is the first game. Campbell are trying out this new experimental forward, and Diego Konix played there at the JUCO level. Dominguez lays it off. Sordo. And Amish is going to be called for the hand check here. His hands were too much on the attacking player. You have to be careful. It has to be a slight touch and a removal. When you hang on and press forward, that's going to allow an attacking player to feel that contact and draw the foul every time. And for those of you at home, if you felt those words coming through the mics, it's because he was literally putting the hand check on me. So I now know how Sordo felt inside and around the 18-yard box. And you can see it's going to be Revit low to take this set piece. Another guy who has really stepped it up in season number two. Right-footed ball, knotted away by McCoy. Sordo, who scored the goal earlier, recycling the ball, Gardner-Webb. Campbell has won a high percentage of headers, both offensively and defensively. The, the height differential certainly key, but also body positioning. They've done a lot of that on the back line tonight. Doty rises up. Good oh. header there by him, and he had a big job against PC. He had a very good Cesar Sancho to have to mark, and he did a good job in keeping that PC team known for set pieces off the score sheet. Sancho, an all-conference player in the spring, could be in line for an all-conference type of season this year. To your point, Campbell's team had to play early, different elements on a field that's not always the best conditions, and Dustin Fonder was most impressed with how they, they managed that situation and really attacked it professionally because sometimes you overlook an opponent Clearly, with Presbyterian's postseason success, you never can and how they drew high point earlier this year, but Campbell came out determined and focused, and that paid off into three points. You and I have seen a lot of Presbyterian. We were on the field back in 2018 when Campbell defeated them down on the road. We were here in 2019 when Campbell knocked them off in the tournament. Do you see maybe that Presbyterian-style game possibly being the way for Gardner-Webb here, maybe try and get these set pieces and knock one off that way? With the amount of injuries in this lineup right now, including Bodaka, who's an all-conference midfielder, I'm not sure if that's their best fit. And clearly Tony Setzer with a versatile lineup. He's been willing to bring in players like Dominguez and, and Nardi off the bench who have played very minimal minutes entering this matchup. And now with Medza enter, exiting for a quick moment to re-enter, it's, it's just mixing and matching bodies to find the right equation. Dominguez 
Away by Lamb. Sends that one back to New Zealand, his home country. Rios. Rittner forward. It's an interesting proposition to your point for Gardner-Webb with the three defense oriented unit bringing two defending midfielders forward. At what point could Campbell counter and try to expose them for a two goal lead? Good work by Brown to get around Minza. Cuts it back on him again. Just too much on that one and perhaps a little excitement there. Not very often you're able to beat Moses Minza not once but twice. He's a top 50 defender in the country and arguably the best defender in the Big South. To have the speed and also the awareness that Moses has, once you create that space by verting one way going the other, it's about staying calm and mentally focused in those moments. A huge challenge that Tony Setzer mentioned to us, his attacking players had to be more clinical in those situations. And to your point, he just missed his chance. She mentioned Moses Mensa, a player who has had a phenomenal year on the calendar during the spring. He spent with Des Moines Menace in USL League Two, where he won the national championship, was named the number third prospect in all of the league, which is, of course, a big deal because that's a summer league for college players, and he could very well be one for this Campbell side that has a future at the next level. And could theoretically play another year at Campbell, if not longer, depending on his eligibility. So Dustin Fonder has a bevy of riches of players due to COVID that could come back and keep this program going. Momo, supported by Amish. Drives it on his left, deflects out for Morris. Chests it down, blocked but stays alive for Mensa. Taken away once again. Odal Brown has been extremely active on the back line as he comes forward now, but that foot getting in intercepted what could have been a beautiful pass. Moses Mensa tracking back, McCoy using his speed as well. Boy, Brandon Gardner's letting him play for a minute, and all of a sudden he, he quickly brings in the foul. I love the physicality from these clubs, especially from the outside wingers. We mentioned coming in how important it was for Campbell to get it out wide, and Gardner-Webb needed to bring the physicality to match that. We've seen it a lot in this second half. Here's Amish. Squeezed out. Not a lot of support, but might be able to make something here. San Filippo. Sliding challenge by Lamb, does just enough. Brown to take this throw. 54 minutes in that game against High Point, that three nothing loss. Not only that loss, but now a fifth game in 14 days. The minutes are certainly something to watch for Tony Setzer's club. Young. Player Campbell want to see more of. Amish on his left. Curls it and adds the number three. An exclamation point on a big second half turnaround for the Fighting Camels. The freshman of the week adds to it in a brand new week. You talk about composure inside the 18. Amish here not only creates space, he sees his avenue, notices the keeper comes to step forward, and once you get by Catherall, it's a wide open target if you just played at the right height. Exactly what Amish does here. What a week for the freshman. Make that now two goals and one assist in his last two games, you know that transitioning from another country to the United States is difficult, but he has got an entire group around him of French-speaking players that have helped him through that transition and have made him the player that he is now. And let's be frank, the greatest language of soccer is success. The more you score, the more you have ability to, to finish. Your teammates get more trust in you. You learn to open up to your teammates, and clearly this last week has opened up a new style of play for Kenny Amish as he develops into that attacking midfield role. Really thought you were going to say that the language of the best language of football is French for a second, just given how many French players are in this Campbell lineup. But to your point, Dustin Fonder did mention that, the yep. amount of six to seven players who speak the language enough to communicate and explain things to Amish, who is literally learning the language in the last two months. Badico, lovely ball out. He's one of those French speakers. Here's Martinez, the Floridian, sizing up his defender. That's the language of sunshine and rainbows down there. Badico. Substitution now for the running Bulldogs. Engelking comes on. 
replaces Raventlo, and Raventlo, a player who is trying to rein things in. Here's a look at what they've got to look forward to, Campbell. A game on the weekend and a quick turnaround. Dustin Fonder called this a six-point week. That starts tonight with three, and then you you host, or sorry, go to UNC Asheville, a match where they need to take advantage of those opportunities, especially with this part of conference being a lighter part of their schedule before upstate at high point at the end of the season. It's the exact opposite for Gardner-Webb. They had a very front-heavy schedule with USC Upstate, Campbell, and High Point in the beginning. As we see, Broussard dispossessed. The good thing, they have to look forward to Gardner-Webb. No game at the weekend, so if they get out a win here, they can at least rest over the next few days. More importantly, it's confidence too, right? Because you play the three top teams in the league coming in. You earn a win, you earn a loss, and in this match, it's still up in the air. Young. Gets it past Rios. Broussard to add his second. Whiffs on it, and they manage to scramble the ball away. Gerard, Gerard, Gerard. Oh, me, oh, my. He's going to have some nightmares after that one. A chance to add to his already hot start with a goal. Clearly missed a chance. They're not wasting any time getting it back in play. Mensa to Amish. Looking for number two. It's Broussard, who missed his seconds just a moment ago. Out of play for a Campbell throw. And boy, for this Campbell attack, already two goals in the half. Certainly want to convert on opportunities. Young right here, Broussard, it, whoop, just missed it. And then smart play defensively to get it out by all means necessary. This is a Gardner-Webb team that's been pressed on the back line. Amish causing Lily Moose some problems. Out for a Campbell throw. Tick down to the final half an hour here. Campbell, after having a 1-0 lead wiped away in the first half, stretch it back out. Two-goal lead now, meeting that three-goal average on the season. Momo. Offside flag is up against Broussard. Referee calls it back instead for a foul. There's a real opportunity now, and this one's in a difficult position, Evan, because it could be a shot, but it could also be a cross. Campbell's had success with those crosses as well, getting the ball in with the height they've been able to possess. When Morris comes forward, when Koenix comes forward, putting bodies in position to convert, and this is sort of what Dustin Fonder wants to tinker with, with rotating lineups, with putting new players in these set pieces, finding his correct rotation for when the postseason comes. Three men stand over this one. One with an armband, the other Amish. Two goals and an assist to his name this week. It will be Amish. Lifts it over, harmlessly behind. That's an experimental cross that you want a striker to take. You think about in Ted Lasso, if you anger the striker enough and give him motivation that Jamie Tart will go for goal. Kind of a similar situation there. As Amish is coming off a goal five minutes ago, he's playing with a ton of confidence. Did you argue Moses Mensa is the Roy Kent of the Big South Conference? I might have to go for George Badico, but he's he's just such a, a happy guy. There's it's it's a hard one because you don't find so many players quite as grumpy as Roy Kent. Probably an Ian Rees, for those of you who remember. That's the, definitely the perfect equivalent there. He was an all conference defender as well, not just no schmuck by any means. Given away by Gardner Webb, and now Amish can run it out. Kimball themselves, not a lot of break here. And we'll have to see how long they leave these starters on. Difficult header back. Campbell gifted a corner kick here. Well, Dustin Fonder does not have the litany of options he once does. No Jalen James or Daniel Hernandez available for tonight. Sammy Sharaf Amal is working his way back into the lineup. So when you're down three critical offensive-minded players, it, it does sort of mix and match with the amount of minutes you can provide versus when you're fully healthy. This is a very different look for these two teams. Back in the spring, Campbell played five players who made their debuts. They got away with a 1-0 win and a first-time goal score. This match, very different. They've got all the strengths out there. Young. Campbell lining up top of the 18. Played short to Amish. Lays it off. Touches it around his man. Look at the amount of bodies committed back defensively by Gardner-Webb as they earn another corner. They'll do it all over again. And something we saw in the first half, Evan, was 
Campbell really loading up the goalkeeper's box, really standing on the line. This time they're lining up maybe a little further away, maybe looking for that deeper cross. Think about the amount of quality chances Campbell's had in this match. Maybe not resulting in the shot totals, but that puts a lot of pressure on your defense, especially with a keeper, Melo Rios, who has demons in his mind on some of those second chances he's let loose. Tyler Young. Mensa. Mensa still has his shot deflected. Amish tried a ball back in, and it's away by Catherall. That was a big bump there by Badico on Medza. And that's a real good outlet for this Gardner-Webb team. When you have just the one man forward, right, you play your top ten position, you do create those chances. If you can win a one-on-one -on -one ball in the air, it creates that counterattack that Gardner-Webb has desperately needed in this match. And a smart foul by Badico because anything that gets past him becomes trouble for Rodriguez in the post. 25 minutes remain, and... It's going to be difficult for Gardner-Webb the longer this game stays at 2-0. You imagine they need a goal pretty soon to try and keep themselves in this one. Gardner-Webb has scored two goals once this season. They need two more goals in 25 minutes and honestly two quality chances on target. They had plenty in the first half with four shots on goal, but in this half they've been defensive-minded, they've been in a shell, trying to contain this Campbell attack that has come out with a fury. And let's make no mistakes here, folks. This is one of the best offenses that Campbell have in the nation. So it was always going to be an uphill battle to try and keep them out. And to Gardner-Webb's credit, for that entire first half, pretty much, they were able to do so. And they did it because of excellent man marking, especially from the outside wingers. In, in this half, Campbell is countered by working the ball more in the middle and f flustering it out from the inside. And that's a good adjustment from Dustin Fonder. Lily Moose, another shot from distance. This time goes well over. Saw it work for them in the first half, Gardner-Webb, taking the lesson there and reapplying it. If your court got on that shot, you have to be creative at some point. You can't always sit back and settle. Unfortunately, there's a high miss rate on that opportunity from 35 yards out. You appreciate the effort, but with 24 minutes left, you are starting to count the clock a bit and need to get some quality chances. Young holding it up and releasing Martinez. Amish on his right. Thinks about the shot. Holds it off. Here's the Frenchman. Young drives it low. Saved in front of Rios. Here's a quick turnaround the other way. Sordo. Speaking Rodriguez of Sordo, that ball was like there. a samurai sword to get that kick. Badico fouled. Think about the importance of that play, though, for Ido Rodriguez. If it sneaks past him, uncontested goal. That's such a difficult play for a keeper. You can't necessarily punch it out. You have to find the right footing on it. it takes an awkward bounce. That's a challenging play for a goalkeeper. Stood up by Momo. Over the head of Martinez. Jimenez O'Farrell. And Gardner Webb clear. Campbell just not giving up the ball. We saw towards the latter stages of that first half and probably the first minute here in the second, Gardner Webb built some possession, but they're going to be very wary, Campbell, of giving up the ball. And with Engel King in the lineup, he has a goal and assist this year. He's a player who has a lot of activity, a lot of motion in his game. He wants to put pressure on that Campbell back line. When you bring in fresh legs like this in the second half, that's sort of the idea behind it. You are chasing two goals, so it might come back to bite you. But at this point, if you're Tony Setzer, you want to be more attack-oriented and really try to put Campbell on a defensive mindset. Lily Moose hooks that one away. One of the things we've spoken with Coach Fonder about for multiple games this season has been putting games away. They've had a couple where they've been up by one and had to leave their starters on for the entirety of it. He said if we can get three, four goals, put a game away, that means we can start resting players and really start to build some momentum. But too often this season, games have been too close and not been able to do that. Once again, not getting a clean sheet. Only three substitutes tonight for Dustin Fonder. One via injury to Broussard, but with four players not available due to injuries tonight, they haven't necessarily had the depth to make those calls with the substitutes. 12 games now for the Fighting Camels. Just one clean sheet. Something to worry about, but in the end, they're still getting the results they need, and
And Coach, you, you so could, often talk about the clean sheets, but in the end, if you're getting the wins, how much does it really mean? You could argue in this game the amount of defensive chances they've had. As you see, Gardner-Webb has winnable games upcoming. They've only allowed two quality shots on target the whole match. One was outside the 18, basically a long-footed shot that snuck over the Rod Rodriguez. Otherwise, there have not been clean chances on target. And despite the one goal, if you're Dustin Fonder, you say, well, how many shots have we given up? How many possessions? How many... How much of the ball do they have? We've dominated all of those things. That results in good defensive play, regardless of the one goal that sneaks through. At least in my books, but what do they pay me for, you know? Gardner-Webb here as we pass to the halfway point of the second half. Had a lot to play for coming out of the break. Now find themselves in a two-goal hole. That's a strong run, by the way, to set up that for Jimenez. Lays it off. Foot race as Doty toe pokes it away. There's a smart form of physicality in soccer, and Basafi Doty using his body position and his strength to just create separation off the ball. That buys him an extra second to get back on defense. It's not a foul. It's not an extension of the arms, but it's a great use of his body to just free up space to eliminate that threat. Substitutions both ways, and it's Gardner-Webb bringing on another offensive threat in Owen Zaldivar. Sordo. Zaldivar's first touches in this match. And Zaldivar does have an assist this year, started multiple matches. He's a quality player for this club. Had two goals back in the spring against Presbyterian, earned him big south. Offensive player of the week. And maybe we haven't quite explained it well enough, perhaps, but there's something very unusual about this Gardner-Webb team in that they do have 75 players on the roster. That's one of the largest in the country, and that means there's plenty to choose from from Coach Setzer's perspective. Well, more importantly, it provides competition, and especially on a day-to-day -day basis, there's never an assurance of who's going to travel on the roster. Heck, Five to six players we, we learned aren't available, the, you know, the hours before. So it just creates that camaraderie and that competition that a team needs, especially when you can go to a roster that's played, I think, over 25 players this year just in regular matches, not to mention the scrimmages and the exhibitions they play against each other. Morris comes back on for Young as we take a look at Edu Rodriguez. We've talked about how he's had to replace some big shoes Six saves he's made, which is a career high on three separate occasions this season. The big difference we're seeing this year as opposed to last is Lechuga sometimes didn't always get the credit he deserved because he didn't have that many saves. The defense kept the saves away from him. We're seeing a different Campbell look this year and a goalkeeper who's having to face a lot more shots. It's ironic that tonight he has not had that attention on him, just one shot on target. But nonetheless, his ability to come out of the box and really play some of those through balls and forward swinging balls that's been helpful in itself. He doesn't result in a stat. You don't put it on the scorecard anywhere, but it has allowed Campbell's defense to be very man-oriented, especially on the back line, and it just buys them a little layer of protection. It's like putting on Crest white strips at night, just an extra nice layer to make sure you're nice and clean, and you don't want things to get sloppy on the back end. Thank you for the recommendation. Here's Amish. Had his jersey pulled. He's going the halfsies here. Short sleeve and no sleeve, thanks to that tug on his jersey. There's a look at that range of passing that he provides. Dustin Fonder said his confidence has exploded tenfold since the winning Big South Player of the Week this past week. Morris. Guy's just like a freight train. When he gets going, he's so hard to stop. And you feel like he's just moments away from being a really fantastic player at this level, maybe just missing one slight thing. This guy who had a very successful career at the JUCO level out at Tyler Junior College. 12 goals, 8 assists, got to go to the national tournament at that level. Still, as you mentioned, going through that process of switching up to the Division One, And Dustin Fonder mentioned he's like a sponge on the field, learning from his teammates, developing his, his playmaking because he's got the skill, he's got the talent. That's clearly there. But, hey, when do I be more assertive? When do I pass it off more? When do I make my decisions to be offensive-minded? And that's, that's the key challenge for any attacking player, especially when they learn and develop a new program.
Konix. Laid off for Momo. Referee saw the foul, tried to play advantage, calls it back. Reventlo there, a little too much hand checking, hand fighting. You can fight with your shoulders, your body, but once the arms get extended, you're going to eventually make that call. Morris, what a shot straight at Rios. Tries to turn in the deflection, and he does so. Goal number two, both of them off rebounds. It's Gerard Broussard. Broussard loves when he gets a moment. First goal against Greensboro in the opening game. He's a late addition to the lineup. What does he do? Goal in the sixth minute. Here in the second half, Morris with a rocket off the keeper. And Broussard, the beneficiary, bouncing it through. That's creativity there for a second goal. Broussard on both occasions opportunistic to be in an area where he can put it home. And the player who didn't get a lot of looks in the spring, just three appearances on two starts, has now made three starts on 12 appearances and has shown Coach Fonder that that was good to rely on him to put faith in his ability. We mentioned the amount of injuries leading into this game. No James tonight, no Hernandez tonight, no Sami Sharaf Amal. It was going to test the depth of Dustin Fonder's club. So who gets the call tonight? Gerard Broussard in the lineup, the sophomore who has been asked to be more offensive-minded, attack-oriented. He's playing that top position in the winger, and you see it with the goal in the sixth minute. This one a little more opportunistic, but what a clinical bounce to sneak it past the keeper. You talk about that top position. That's an area we can't forget that Campbell have really been struggling to find a replacement in. Of course, you were never going to really be able to replace a Thibaut Chiquel, but still we're waiting to find who's going to grab that role as Kimi Amish is dispossessed. You hear Tony Setzer continuing to communicate. That's so important. This match is out of hand in terms of the score, but you mentioned Gardner-Webb's schedule. They played the three toughest teams in the first two weeks. The more they can learn from this match and find any sort of rhythm, it'll pay so many dividends against Asheville and Longwood next week. Good work along the end line. McCoy just as well. Sordo holding his leg after that challenge. Momo. Nice flick by Amish. Simple pass out to Minza. He has some space, drives it, deflects. Morris wisely watches it out for a corner. And the photographer with great footwork there. She cleared it into the corner, put it in a nice position. I mean, all you want to ask for is just letting your attacking player play it on surface, and that's a good touch. I don't know how the photo was of it, but it was a great play. We talked about it in pregame, about how Kimi Amish not just does the scoring, which he's done tonight, but has also been able to do some of his passing. What have you seen from him when he's been able to cut inside and get those lateral balls across the pitch? Amish's quick starting ability has been is outmatched Gardner-Webb tonight. They have not been able to, when he makes a decisive move, whether it's fake left and go right or vice versa, they've had no answer for that ability. And with his eyes looking around the field, such a better passer these last two to three weeks of setting up teammates. Clearly we've seen the goals come as well, but he has been very smart in how he attacks target. If you're wondering why the game has stopped, it's because Sordo is down behind the play in the other side, the other box. So that stopped the clock, but we're about ready to get back underway as he hobbles off the pitch. Campbell here marking the goal line as they look to make it five in what would be the first time this season. Morris, short, gets the return ball, fires it in, behind for yet another corner. Campbell has scored one more goal in the second half than the first this year. That number will change tonight, but they have been even more aggressive and more assertive in second halves of games. And It was interesting because against Presbyterian, it was all early. Two goals in the first half. They added the third late in the half to extend it. This match, a little bit of a slower start with missed chances. They have not missed today. Morris not taking it short this time. Konix, no deflection on the way through. We've seen a couple different looks from Campbell so far for set pieces. A lot of them have been taken short these last couple of times. Do you see that as maybe being an advantage over taking them directly into the box? As far as that height goes, you'd think you'd want to put it straight in. That's where it gets difficult because you've shown on tape so many different looks, and part of this is the mental mind games of 
High Point and Upstate watching this game on film and giving them something else to think about. As much as it is about learning and finding people you trust in those moments, there's some mental mind games as well. Should remind you that Sordo had to come off earlier. He was replaced by Zhao Espinera. Here is Espinera. He's going to try and keep this one in play. Zhao with that Brazilian background. He is so technically sound. You're seeing it now. Lily Moose. Espinera. Solid opportunity there, and that would have been maybe a lifeline back into this match. It's all about the pointing of the toe on that touch, especially when a ball is high above your hip. If you keep that toe pointed down, you can finish forward. Instead, his leg was lofting and falling behind, so you get that upward angle, and there's really no chance to score. Jao Espinera, Brazilian by nationality, born in El Salvador. Now out in Boylan Springs. That is a resort destination for some. <laughs> Certainly not quite as tropical. There's not much can be said about Bowie's Creek either. It's a beautiful night here. This big south play crosses closer to that halfway point. Eyes begin to cast towards the end of October in the month of November when playoffs begin. Amish. Turned over to Badico. And now Morris, who's over on the right-hand side. Whips it in. Rios, nice grab. We've seen both the good and the bad from Rios tonight. Overall, how do you possess, evaluate what he's done? So two goals in this match have been on him. Balls off his mitts that have resulted in second chances. The other two, that's great attacking play. Critical finishes from outside the 18 over his hands. But you look back to those two moments, and that's something that Coach Setzer mentioned entering this game. He needs his goalkeeper to not allow those mistakes and have one boneheaded play every week and not one to two of those per 45 minutes. We knew it was never going to be an easy job coming up against a team as has the offensive prowess of the Fighting Camels. A team who one of the top in the nation as far as goals, points, assists. They rank in the top five. So it's 31 goals now, and the nation leader Greensboro has 32. That might change with them playing tonight, but to be within striking distance of the top scoring team in the country, that does speak to the balance of this offense. And you have to remember that Greensboro team is one that Campbell has already played and defeated on the season. They put three past the Spartans in the season opener. Morris firing again, and you just see he is not giving up. He's had a couple of those chances fall to him, and you think maybe he's going to maybe put his head down and not take as many. He is not stopping. That was a cannon. <laughs> that left foot it can fire missiles as he'll be subbed out here with 10 minutes to play. And here you go, big moment for you, Evan. It's a line shift, let's be honest here, and your favorite guy, Kyoji Hata, Tokyo, Japan, now coming into the game. I love when players who get minimal minutes can check in. This is one of my favorite parts of college sports. And with Hata checking in and, and many others, this is what Dustin Fonder wanted, a chance to give his starters not to play full 90. They'll at least get 80, maybe more so for some of the majority players. But this is a good chance to rotate in bodies. Bjarna Lips comes on as well alongside Braden Teller. Jamie Lamb is now on at center back. So some of those key pieces from Campbell given a rest as they look to see out these final 10 minutes with a three-goal lead. Coach Fonder said that this was the first game in the beginning of a six-point week. And you have to say with this performance, the week's off to a pretty good start. You got three, and now it's all about getting bodies rested, as you see here in these final 10 minutes, and gearing up to not overlook an opponent in Asheville that you scored a boatload of goals against the last time they faced in the spring. You have to compartmentalize that, which this team has done. Dustin Finer credits them for doing so. You have to compartmentalize and focus on the next opponent on Saturday. Put out of play by Koenigs. Cannons it into our press box. I got 10 bucks on Stan Cole catching that one next time it comes in. He's our head statistician and sports information director tonight. We had questions coming into this second half, just how Gardner-Webb are going to 
approach things? Do you feel as though this was really the way they approached it or maybe something that Campbell did that really stretched this game out? Was there anything that Gardner-Webb could have done? Because of the amount of bodies Campbell pressed forward, Gardner-Webb had very few chances to get set pieces like this. The ball, possession-wise, was so heavily on C Campbell's side of the field offensively. Once the second goal went in, Gardner-Webb, they did a little bit l less of man marking and more of area marking, more zone marking. That created some second chances on deflections and ricochets, and that's where the third goal comes in. So to that point, yes, I think they would have looked back and wished they would not have allowed the Broussard goal early in the half. Revent low. Catherall punched away by Rodriguez. Laid off, edge of the box. There's Roundsfell, who's just come on. Gets in a tussle on the edge of the 18. We play on. Down by McCoy. Gardner-Webb recycle it. This is good pressure here. Espinera. And now Lamb can boot it clear. This is the type of possession that Gardner-Webb really wants. Quality chances. Uh-oh. And Broussard and is brought down the referee immediately to his back pocket. And it's going to be a late sending off here. Gerard Broussard drawing the red card. Broussard has been the man of the match so far with the two goals. He's going to draw a quality chance here. And as you see the referee explain, you just cannot commit. You cannot extend your leg out with a player past you. And just to be clear, some of you at home may be saying, well, that's not a lot of contact. doesn't look that malicious. The big deal about that is it's a denial of a clear goal-scoring opportunity. So Broussard was through on goal and then was brought down, which is what warrants the red card. So for the remainder of this match, Gardner-Webb from bad to worse, down to 10 men and down three goals. Might it be the moment for Jake Morris? We've seen him time in and time out in this match. Fire them in. Will it be he or Konix? It is Morris. Drives it in, and it is the moment. The power pays off. Oh, my goodness. What a strike. That's a free kick, and... A man amongst boys out there rocketing this ball in. Morris sees his sights on goal. He already has one. And just off the fingertips of Malel Rios. Check out the curling height on this shot as well. It's going to the front back corner, the back top corner, I should say, and it finds its way through. And the best part about that entire play was the finish with the signature CR7. Sound effect patent pending on that one, but... First time this season that Campbell have scored five, and they're just extending their names at the top of that offensive scoring list in the NCAA. So that's four second half goals, 18 total. And to average a goal per second half really shows you their ability to press forward and make adjustments, and that's why this game has become a blowout. And it is such a change from that first 45 when we thought this game was going to be a nail-biter down to the end. Campbell have grabbed control of it, and that really is the marker between good teams and great teams is the ability to face adversity and then look out, come out of it comfortably. Campbell and Big South play with this win tonight, 15-3-2 in their last 20. That, that's not a fluke. That's not by a team that's offensive-oriented and can't defend. It's a balanced group, and... Clearly in this match, when you bring a player like Jake Morris, who's had very little scoring entering the year, and he just rockets balls. It's, it's a nice touch. Broussard with two goals. These aren't key strikers for Campbell entering the year, and they're contributing big points in conference play. And let us not forget credit due to where it should be. Gardner-Webb to the first 45 gave this Campbell team a run for their money, and that's not to say that they need to be disappointed with this. They're facing arguably the best team in the conference. When they're fighting for spot three, spot four, and then, of course, five and six, which still get to play in the playoffs, the performance like this could earn them a spot. Here's Tyler Young. Rios could hop on it rather easily. But this has to be, for the running Bulldogs, a good positive sign to show you, hey, if we can do that first half, that'll get us a win against some other teams. 
Tony Setzer was quite candid in our conversation. He, I don't want to say grow weary, but you can only take the consolation prizes for so much. And he knows his team is playing better than their record, which they'll drop 2-9 and nine with a loss tonight. However, you talk about a six-point week. That's so important for Gardner-Webb next week to keep themselves in the conference race. They will have about or exactly a week off as they don't play until next Wednesday when they face the other Bulldogs in the Big South. You can see Asheville, though not the run-in Bulldog. Let's be specific. The hyphen is key in that one, but it is a series that's been very tight. Gardner-Webb 4-4 four and four against Asheville in their last eight matches. So if they want to climb into the top five in the league and really clinch a solid playoff berth, it, it starts with winning on Wednesday. Young chasing this one down. Gets around his man, one-on-one. -on -one. Excellent save by Rios. Went for the five-hole, couldn't get it. The fact he didn't nutmeg Rios is the most impressive part of that play. Malel contorts his body, traps the ball on the ground, and it easily could be 6-1. to one. one of the things you always have to remember is on paper, this you would think is not really going to be a competitive game. A Campbell team that's got a lot of momentum and a lot of offensive output. But for some reason, not just in soccer, Conference games are tougher, and we've seen a perfect example of that through this first half. The familiarity certainly breeds content. And for Gardner-Webb, it was a game plan approach defensively that was wonderful in the first half. They allowed seven shots, but only two on target. There weren't a lot of quality looks against Rios. In the second half, though, just no answer for the firepower of the Camels. George Round filled calmly out for Owen McCoy. Brownsfell, who's making his way back from injury as well, picking out a lovely pass for Martinez. San Filippo. Kyoji Hata sliding across. You can see Dustin Fonder, who's going to be a very happy man. After a big time turnaround in the second half. What Fonder will enjoy most about this match is down four critical players who usually get big minutes. His team did not struggle to make adjustments. We saw the first 10 minutes with the goal, the goal from Broussard. They quickly pressed forward. They kept bodies in the attacking end. And then the back line, the one goal allowed was a just a beautiful finish right at the edge of the 18. Otherwise, no real traffic against Rodriguez. And that's what you want as a coach, the balance with both sides. And you talked about the fact that they've missed some players. But the other big thing to think about is a player they haven't missed as far as being on the pitch in Tyler Young a guy who leads them in points, assists, and goals, but he hasn't contributed at all, and they've still managed to score five. What does that say about the flexibility, versatility of the Campbell offense? Impressive. Clearly a team that when you scout Campbell, you can't just scout a top winger who's going to score every goal. You also can't prepare for one style because they've been stylistically different in this half between the first and the second. And clearly a program that's had Big South success. We mentioned that record. It's for a reason. And Tyler Young, who's become a surging star, he was not that in the spring. He's now a top goal scorer. That's an added piece to an already loaded offense. Young chasing this one down, laying it off wonderfully. Lips, slots it past Rios, and that's a cherry on top. Just when we said Young wasn't getting on the score sheet, he lays in a perfect pass. That's a great look as well because Young is offensive-minded. But in this situation, he's team-oriented. It's Young hopping on a long ball, just cutting it back, not even a look, well, looking that, the other direction. And that's what I was going to say. Tyler Young has the defense looking one way, and then he switches feet mid-kick and sends it back. So watch this right here. If you're 35, you're thinking, oh, but ball's going left. All of a sudden, he goes back right, and then yips, gives the goalkeeper yips, and he sneaks it through for another goal. Bjarna Lips, who scores his first career collegiate goal. The German, who has come on as a substitute here, puts a flourish on top of a fantastic second half Campbell performance. Ninety seconds to the finish of this one. It'll be a Campbell team who faced a lot of adversity through the first 45. Going to route the Bulldogs to a 6-1 to one victory. 27 shots as well, 12 on target. Those are big-time numbers against anyone you play. And you have to remember, the red card came late, so that doesn't have a whole lot of impact on 
the overall score line. The game was 5-1 to one at that point. 4-1, to one, excuse me. Campbell will remain perfect in conference play. 3-0 and oh, will stay top of the league. Doesn't matter what happens at the other venues because they have a win up on the rest of the conference. And they're playing the earliest match of the night as well. So you get a chance to check the film, watch the scores, and see how you sit in the conference with High Point and Upstate, the big game, playing tonight. Those could be teams that feature later on. Campbell starting to build their resume and showing exactly why they might be one of those top two teams who get a bye onto the next round and possibly home field advantage all the way to the Big South final. Still a long road ahead of us, but as each day tick by, it's yet another closer to one of the teams from this conference booking their spot in the NCAA tournament, the true Holy Grail. That does it, Campbell ride a stellar second half performance to a six to one victory in the Big South. We're gonna break it all down for you right after this. Stick with us here on ESPN Plus. We are on camera. Welcome back to Bowie's Creek where Campbell have just wrapped up their third consecutive victory in the Big South, 6-1 to one over the running Bulldogs in a confident performance. Zach Burley, Evan Budrovich alongside me. And Evan, we talked about Tyler Young maybe being a little quiet, but then again, he got a hat trick of assists. That's the first time it's happened in a while. Since 2010, Mitchell Cardenas got involved in that. Tyler Young with two assists late in this match really put the game away. He's the leading goal scorer in the conference. All he does is set up his teammates. We saw six goals, five in the second half. Really a balanced scoring effort tonight. Big time win for Campbell, especially after a very tight first half. Let's show you how it went with our full-time highlights. Recap all the goals and show you just how close this game was for a long period of time. Underway in the very beginning, Rebound deflection by Broussard. We're going to see that again later. Malel Rios had trouble with some of those balls on target. Three goals given up on second chances. And this is Broussard in the right place at the right time. He got the start 10 minutes before opening kick. 
It looked like at that point Campbell were clear and away, but Gardner Webb got one back in the second half. Early start, and the goals just started pouring. Badico with a quality touch. That was the not only the go ahead, but eventually the game sinker at three to one. And then the offense just followed suit. How about that strike from the freshman? It was goal after goal, and we got a good amount of them, not just in the amount, but in the quality as well. We saw some good set pieces. Jake Morris was putting a few of them forward. Not technically an assist, one. but he earned it on that shot because Morris got himself a goal later too. It was all one-way traffic for Campbell late. This free kick fantastically finished off. Left-footed strike into the top corner. Campbell were far away at that point. Ooh, when you play that in full speed, my goodness, Jake Morris can rocket a ball. This no-look layoff pass for Lips capped things off at six. Just shows you the quality that Tyler Young brings to this attack. That is how things wrap up. Six to one, Campbell three points in the bank on what should be a six-point weekend, says Coach Fonder. They're off on the right foot, but still a lot of work to do. For myself, Zach Burley, Evan Budjovic, everybody down in the trailer, we say thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you very soon.